Hello everybody, my name is Alex and welcome to a video where we're going to talk about Ethiopia in Civ 6. But it's going to be a bit different because we're going to look at the historical aspects behind the Civ. So what's the history behind its leader, the unique unit, the unique tile improvement. Um, so hopefully after watching this video you'll be able to start your first game as Ethiopia in Civ 6 with some more knowledge on the Civ. So hopefully you'll learn some stuff. So let's begin with the leader of Ethiopia, who is Menelik II. Now, I don't think Menelik II led them in Civ V, um, but yeah, he's a massive figure in Ethiopian history and a very, very popular one, I believe, with the people of Ethiopia. So Menelik II was emperor of Ethiopia from 1889 until 1913, and he achieved a lot, and I'm going to try and summarize it as quickly as possible. So undoubtedly one of his biggest achievements was Ethiopia's victory in the first Italo-Ethiopian War. Now just like many other African countries, Ethiopia was incredibly rich in natural resources and raw materials. So Italy saw it as fair game in what was becoming the scramble for Africa. And that's the term that's pretty much used for this period in the 19th century when European countries just tried to pretty much divide Africa between themselves. Now, in truth, the Italians thought the war would be relatively straightforward. They thought the Ethiopians, because partly of what Menelik had been saying, were completely unprepared for a war with the Italians. Well, they were wrong, and Menelik fought off the invasion, crushing the Italians substantially at the Battle of Adwa. Now, Ethiopia remained one of the few African countries because of this to successfully resist European imperialism in the 19th century. So, this is interesting historically, obviously, and a lot of people know this about Ethiopia, but what we can say from this is that's why Ethiopia is a defensive Civ in Civ 6. It's because Menelik was one of the big reasons that Ethiopia did not end up under Italian uh, occupation in the 19th century, and that's definitely reflected if you look at the civilization and its bonuses in the game. However, although it is incredibly interesting, Menelik was far more than just a great tactician. He was actually, when you take a look at it, a sort of founder of modern day Ethiopia. Before he centralized the country and how power was exercised in the country, the princes of the other Ethiopian domains seem to have been far more autonomous in how they exercised their own power. The way I kind of simplify this is Ethiopia was just not as unified as it, as it turned out to be when Menelik had completed the process. Now, when the centralization process was complete, the almost continuous series of wars within Ethiopia's territory was greatly reduced. He could clamp down on things like slavery a lot easier. So basically, it just allowed Ethiopia to be in a strong position where they could fight off this Italian invasion. So what Menelik achieved was far, far greater than just a good tactical victory. He did lots of other modernization as well to the country, which included the following things plus more. I emphasize plus more because I just didn't have time to include everything. So he improved infrastructure through the development of things like roads and bridges and railways. I know he developed railways from Addis Ababa, which was the capital of Ethiopia, which he actually founded. We'll come onto that in a minute. He also improved the education system and founded Ethiopia's first modern banks and postal system. Now, if you think about that, yes, it's easy just to kind of roll off the facts, but they are big steps in modernizing Ethiopia. And as I keep saying, if he'd not done these things, if he had not taken Ethiopia to a higher level and started to develop the country, what's to say he would have been able to keep fighting off invasions and obviously interest from other European nations? So Menelik did an awful lot for Ethiopia and that is why he is greatly celebrated in Ethiopia by a lot of people and why obviously that has translated to him leading the Civ in Civilization VI. The final thing I just want to mention as well is that, and I just, I, I have already, already touched on this, but Menelik founded the city of Addis Ababa, which is why it's probably Ethiopia's capital city in Civ 6. And in real life too, Addis Ababa is the capital and largest city of Ethiopia. So it's just kind of a nice little fact in there, which I found pretty intriguing when I discovered it. So moving on, let's talk about Ethiopia's unique unit, which is the Aromo Cavalry. And these, first and foremost, played a key part in the Battle of Adawa. Do you remember that battle where Menelik II pretty much defeated the Italians that I just mentioned? That is the battle, and the cavalry played a big part there. But what actually are these units? 
So traditionally the cavalry was known for being fierce warriors who carried spears and shields into battle and this is represented in their appearance in Civ 6 because if you just look at the cavalry unit you can see I think they're carrying spears and shields so there you go. But at Adawa, they are recorded as being mounted infantrymen who, if they chose, could dismount and at a good strategic location, bring fire down on their enemy, which could be a good reason why they've got extra movement, maybe. Obviously, if you are a mobile infantry, you can move, get to a good strategic location quite easy, and then, um, obviously, dismount. But I think they're sort of a mixture of these two interpretations of what the cavalry were. Obviously, they work and appear as cavalry with spears and, and, and shields, but in the Battle of Adawa, which is a major battle, they use their extra movement on the battlefield to, to kind of move to strong strategic locations, hence their extra movement in Civ 6. So that's kind of one interpretation of how, how they're being shown in Civ 6 and why they're being shown like that. One really intriguing thing I found out about this cavalry is that psychologically, their appearance at the Battle of Adowa was actually a big blow for the Italians because around Europe, the Aromo cavalry had sort of got this mythical reputation for some reason. There was these rumours that they were kind of so unforgiving uh, on the battlefield, which I'm sure they were very fierce, but th th there was this reputation they were sort of mythical in ability and danger. So when the Italian soldiers saw this, it, it scared them a little bit. Obviously, you can see from how important a role they've played, that is why they're in Civ 6. And I think from the research I could find on them, they are very worthy of being in the game as well. But moving on, the unique improvement for Ethiopia is the Rock Hewn Church. Now, this church, or these churches of Lali Bella, have a very, very distinctive design. And I absolutely love how they love on the, look on the Civ 6 map. I think they look incredible and, like I said, very, very distinctive. Now, in real life, these churches are located in the Western Ethiopian Highlands near the town of Lalibela and have existed there since around the beginning of the 13th century. Now, this is really cool. So, when they were first built, 11 of them, they were actually built to recreate the holy city of Jerusalem. And even to this day, these now archaeological sites are still an important place for the pilgrimage of Ethiopian Orthodox worshippers. So if you actually look at what these churches are all about, first and foremost, they're religious based. They were built because of religion, so that's why they give a faith bonus in the early game and for pretty much the whole game in Civ 6. But after you discover flight in Civ 6, they actually give tourism. And that is kind of for and because they are archaeological sites that I'm sure bring tourists as well as Orthodox worshippers. So it's really cool how this unit's been represented in Civ 6 because it would, in real life, give faith and tourism. Now, since we're on the topic of religion, it, it's a good thing to acknowledge Ethiopia is a predominantly religious-based Civ. But why could that be? Have we got any kind of reasons and examples why, could that, that, why that could be? So, well, we do. So Ethiopia, to start with, is one of the oldest Christian states in the world. And when you combine that with the churches and stuff, you can see why already we're starting to build a picture of a sieve which has religious importance. Additionally, though, it's not just Christianity where this is important. So the small group of Jews that live within the country are actually said by some scholars to be the direct descendants of the lost tribes of Israel. Now, these are, were a group of around 10 tribes who are said to have been deported from Israel after the conquest of the Neo-Assyrian Empire in circa 722 BCE. So, the, a lot of uh, Muslims also live within Ethiopia. So, it's a very diverse nation. It's got a rich history in many different religions. So, you can see why Ethiopia is a religious civ in Civ 6. Now, besides religion, another key bit about um, Ethiopia in Civ 6 is its reliance on hills. Their unique cavalry can move across hills without additional movement costs. All their bonuses sort of rely on hills. You can't build the churches unless you're building it partly on a hill or on a volcanic tile. So hills are massive and the reason for that is basically because Ethiopian terrain in real life is very hilly and mountainous and I really like how they've worked that in. I know they've done it with other civs but it's it's really cool to see the actual geographical terrain of civilizations in real life being reflected in the bonuses in game so I like that very much. 
Okay, so that is it for a few historical facts on the Ethiopian civilization. I just tried to find out as much as I could in a few hours, so hopefully you have learned something. And what would be really amazing is if you know other stuff as well, let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to talk to you down there. Thank you so much for watching this video today. If you want to see another one of our videos, then check out the video in the box below where I break down the bonuses of the Ethiopian civilization in Civ 6. If you have enjoyed, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this video with a friend. Thanks for watching. My name is Alex, and I will see you in another video soon.